Hello guys, welcome to Supercars of London and the first episode of Living With A Supercar. I thought that it's time that I bring you on my journey, uh, come along with some of the adventures and find out what it's really like to own a car like the Audi R8. So I thought that the first episode should be my attempt at a full review um, of the V8 supercar. I'm going to attempt to relay my feelings and emotions that I get when I drive the car, um, but also talk you over a lot of the details about the Audi R8 in this specific car. Because um, at the moment it's completely stock, and as you know, it's not going to stay stock. So it's best to do a full review right now. Let's go. As you guys know, I've never actually done a review of driving a car. I've always been in the passenger side. So this is the first one, so bear with me. Don't go too harsh on the comments and some of my stats. Um, but what we have here is a 2008 57 reg Audi R8 V8. It's a 4.2 litre engine that propels this car from 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. And it's got a top speed of about 187 miles an hour. Um, it's four-wheel drive system, uh, which is pretty similar to the Lamborghini Gallardo, as they're both the same sort of car. 70% to the rear and 30% to the front, which makes it um, quite fun in the wet. Talking about the dimensions of the car, what I'm used to with the Vauxhall Astra, this is a lot wider, a lot lower, but pretty much the same length. Um, Lamborghini said that, or Top Gear said more like, that the Lamborghini Gallardo is the um, same length as a Ford Focus. I'm pretty sure this isn't that far off, but um, I have front and rear parking sensors which help me maneuver about in, in tight spaces. But talking about like um, the ride height, um, a lot of people have asked me like how good is it over speed bumps. It's actually not bad. Um, we've probably got about that much. I don't really know in inches or anything like that. I'm, I'm not a stats man. Um, but what I do know is it's about 75 inches wide. Um, so if you want to go and Google and convert that into meters or however you want to understand it, um, you can do that. But after the end of this video, as we walk around, we've got the 18 inch, no, 19 inch um, double five spoke wheels with um, black brake calipers. Um, I hope they get painted soon. Moving along, we've got the silver metallic um, paint. So it's quite flaky in the sun. It looks awesome. And then here we have probably the most um, expensive optional extra on the Audi R8 from new. Uh, it's the carbon fiber side blades. Um, no idea how much they are. I think they're in the region of about three and a half thousand pounds. Check out some of the, the engine, nice and warm. And the things that you can differentiate between the Audi R8 V8 and V10, um, it's got four um, tailpipes, not exhausts. Um, SB Race Engineering corrected me on the fact that these are tailpipes and not exhausts. The R8 V10 actually has two blades instead of four, and this whole back is um, in black. And then moving around, the V10 has different style wheels, as you've probably seen on the likes of Shmi 150's car. The um, side blades are um, more aggressive. So this is the Audi R8 V8 from the outside. Um, let's head inside and we'll talk about some of the uh, details of the interior. So inside the Audi R8 V8, um, you sit quite low to the ground. I'm probably about two and a half, three feet off the ground um, eye level. And we've got the or oh, I don't even know a flat bottom steering wheel, and it's like full leather. Um, so it's nice to have when your hands are like that, but it's, it's, quite, it's quite weird and quite um, funny to get used to having the steering wheel with a flat bottom. We've got a hell of a lot of carbon um, all around here, which again is optional extras. And then ahead of me, we've got, the, we've got some controls that um, you can use to do the sat nav or the, the music system. But the overall seating position of the car is actually very central. The steering wheel is exactly where I'd want it to be. The pedals, again, exactly where you want it to be. I've watched um, reviews of Top Gear and things like that saying that Lamborghini um, and sometimes Ferrari don't get the driving position right. You've got your feet over there and you're... But for the Audi, of course, as being German, it's absolutely perfect. And then if we start it up, um, you have to put your foot on the clutch steering wheel in and you see the the dials go crazy for a bit 
and it all sort of goes red. Copyright issues with music. Um, and here we go, let's go for that. There you can see that we've got the SD cards. Um, that's also where the sat nav sits as well. I have, no, I think, I haven't even used sat nav. So there's a lot of nice cool features. We've got auto dimming lights, electric seats. We've got electric folding wing mirrors. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see. But that's also quite cool when I'll be parking in London. And overall, it's just a really, really nice spec car. Um, and obviously, when you start it up, you get the big V8 grumble. So we'll go and uh, take this car for a spin. So when you first move off from the um, Audi R8, again, you get the sense of how low you are to the ground. Obviously, driving past parked cars, um, you're a lot lower than most. The car doesn't feel like a supercar. It doesn't feel very wide. It doesn't feel very powerful. Um, and you can really drive it very sedated and sort of pootle around town in it and get decent miles to the gallon, which of course is always on my mind um, driving this car. I've gone from the Vauxhall Astra, which probably got about 500 miles to a tank, and it cost about 65, 70 quid to fill up. Whereas this, I get about 300 miles to a tank um, but it cost me £104, as you saw, uh, when I epically failed the first fuel stop. But you probably have to wait around 10 minutes before the oil of the engine warms up and you can really get this car going. But luckily I've already warmed the car up so we can go pretty much straight away. Talking about the sound of the um, V8, I'm not sure whether you can hear it, but it's actually quite worry at the moment. Um, the V8 is very, very quiet. Um, and you can really get away with not making too much noise and creating too much attention to yourself, which is nice um, when you're obviously just looking to get from A to B, which of course this car isn't the best car for doing, but um, it's still quite handy to do so. And as we get out onto the open road, I'll open up the exhaust systems a little bit, um, just slightly, and you'll be able to really sort of hear the V8 sound. So here we go. I mean, that's, I didn't open the exhaust up too much, um, but what I did do was absolutely nail it to the floor and didn't change gear until seven and a half thousand revs, which just opened up the exhaust um, and really gives it that epic, epic V8 sound. I just, I get addicted to it. I really get addicted to um, putting my foot down in this car because the great thing is about the Audi R8 V8, a lot of a lot of people have said, well, it's not really a supercar, but what I found when testing my first supercar with Premier Velocity was some of the cars that we tested, like the 458 and the McLaren 12C, are almost too fast for public roads. Um, as you know, the 12C actually gave me a headache. Um, and the 458, it, it, it's so fast, but it's also so dangerous because you can lose your license like that. Whereas this is manageable power. Um, we've got 420 brake horsepower. Um, and it feels like, I mean, I'm 23 years old. I've jumped up from a Vauxhall Astra 1.6 and it didn't take me too long to get used to the sort of the power surge that you get in the car. So we're doing two and a half thousand revs now, um, 30 miles an hour in third gear and just put, put my foot down and it just wants to go. The Audi R8 was created to be a rival to the Porsche 911. Um, and I think it's doing a great job because it looks absolutely brilliant i love the looks of the audi r8 this car's what six years old now but it still looks just as good um as it did when it first came out which is um something that you can't say about some of the old porsches the sound wise again is absolutely brilliant and, uh, and like i just can't get away from the fact that you can drive this at very very slow speeds get away with it um, and open the taps when you want. I mean, there's a gap here, like 15 feet, and you just put your foot down. And it's just so much fun. So let's touch upon the um, handling of the Audi R8 and actually being behind the wheel of the, uh, the 4.2 V8. My first impressions of actually driving it for the first time, which was 
after I bought it, because of course I didn't test drive it, um, was that the steering wheel is really quite heavy and at low speeds um, it takes a lot of getting used to. It's almost having the Voxel Astra, which was a 2007, which obviously had power steering. It, this sort of feels like I'm going back in time a bit and it, and it doesn't have power steering. Here we go, we've got we've got some nice turns and the brilliant thing about this car is obviously it's built for speed and built for cornering. It can just, it just hugs the corners like it's not even trying, um, which is probably the best thing about driving a car that's so low to the ground, has such fat tyres and it's got so much power. Um, driving the Vauxhall Astra, the tyres are probably half the width. Um, so when you're going around a corner, like you'll feel like you're gonna topple over um, like a bus or something like that. But um, like driving, driving around like with the traction on, obviously, um, it really, really hugs the road and is a real pleasure to drive. So we're just coming around to this sort of U-bend now. And I'm just like, I've got one hand on the steering wheel and I'm not really trying. And I took that turn at like, oh, this is gonna be... Oh, oh my heart was in my mouth there. That van was inches in my wing mirror. Oh my God. But it's handling wise, as much as the steering wheel, is quite heavy it gives you that sense of being connected to the road and actually being in control of the car whereas some of the other cars that um, I've been in or have heard about in reviews have got quite light steering wheel my girlfriend's car is a Fiat 500 um, and it's built for the city and the steering wheel is like bouncing on air bubbles it's that light so um, just trying to try and avoid this pothole oh we've got a bit of a tunnel here we go Whoa. Oh. There we go, there's the brakes. What the hell? We've come to an impromptu um, car boot sale or something like that and I just... I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and they're realising that we're videoing. What's going on? I have no idea, but we're getting quite a lot of looks for... Um, Interrupting, I think, is the word. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so fun to uh, to drive like this. Oh, we're coming into a nice little um, quiet road, so I think this is probably a nice place to, to summarise and what it's actually like to drive the Audi R8 and sort of finish off my first ever review. So this car is sort of as much as I've seen it and read about the, the fact that it's built for speed, it's built for driving perfection, it's very hard to read those words or to watch it on a video and not actually experience it. So the, the only thing that I could probably say is definitely try and go out and drive a car like this, whether it's on the track or whether you hire one or you set a YouTube channel up and be able to um, buy one, it's definitely, definitely worth um, your while to uh, get behind the wheel of even the R8 V8 like a lot of people yes have said that it's not a real supercar because it doesn't do 200 miles an hour it doesn't do 0 to 60 in three seconds but really on UK roads you're um, you don't need any more than this it's got a brilliant amount of power the handling is just perfect like you saw on those roads um, it's so easy to drive I'm only 23 years old and luckily thank God someone out there has ensured me to drive this car live my dream and um, enjoy this car and I hope that I can bring a lot of enjoyment to everyone else on YouTube um, following the living with a supercar journey um, also supercars of London so make sure that you subscribe share um, and just join my journey and get involved and hopefully one day you can jump in the passenger seat with me if you see me just say hi and um, ask for a ride don't mind giving anyone a ride so um, just pay petrol cheers guys